Hey everyone, Simon and Alex here from Top Tennis Training. In today's video, we're going to cover how to train like a pro. We're going to give you different drills that you can use, that pro players use on court during a training session. So without talking too much, let's get into them right now. That was a great way just to warm up, just to feel the ball, get the top spin going in the boxes. We're really just working on our control. Now we're going to involve a little bit of movement. So I'm going to go cross court, Simon's going to go down the line, and we're going to move each other around still in the boxes. change around and I'm going to go down the line, Simon goes cross court. Here I can really start to focus on my recovery steps to so using that crossover and side step before I run onto the next ball. This is a great way to do it in a controlled environment. recovery step being a crossover that I'm mostly focused about so as I hit the shot my first step recovery is a crossover step trying to get a little bit of distance because when I go to the baseline I'm gonna to have to cover a lot more of the court those distances are gonna get bigger so if I can start using the crossover step I'm gonna be a lot better at movement from the baseline as well way for a pro to warm up is to hit the ball cross court. Cross court is the most used shot in a rally. When we hit the ball cross court, we're hitting the ball safe, we're avoiding the net, we have a bigger court to aim into and we want to practice that because when we get into rallies, we want to be good at doing that later. I repeat that from the backhand side so we do it from both sides of the court. The backhand cross court is a very important shot because uh, usually the player will attack you on the backhand so if you can get it back cross court you give yourself an opportunity to run around the next shot with your forehand. So here it's great to practice your recovery from step so I'm always hitting trying to do a little two-step recovery using that crossover step that I use in the boxes also I can play around with the different footwork patterns so I can try and play a few shots from my right foot and if the ball goes a little bit wider I may try and play a few from my left again I'm trying to get used to hitting those rally balls and when I get pushed out wide I want to be able to be strong on the outside leg as well as my inside leg if I'm hitting that single-handed backhand
or to change a little bit of tempo is uh, with the slice. So now I'm going to work on hitting the slice. I'm looking to get a nice low ball over the net. I'm trying to still hit through it and I'm going to work uh, on getting different kind of slices on the ball. So I'm, I might hit a few where I hit a little bit more on the inside of the ball, making it come out a little bit. I may hit a few on the outside. I can chip a few shorter, chip a few deeper. But the main thing I'm focused on is for the ball not to go too high over the net. I don't want it to sit up for Simon to be able to attack it. You can get into a really nice rally there and actually dealing with a slice with a slice is also a great idea so not only are you practicing your shot but you're also practicing dealing with a slice of that oncoming ball so against playing well when you're playing against a good slicer it's actually very tough to deal with you know you have to either hit it up and through it or you have to slice back and for that you need that slice this is great practice for that So now we're going to practice dealing with a slice with a topspin shot. So I'm going to slice while Simon is using his ground strokes, he's going to topspin off my slice. So it's neutralizing my slice and trying to hit through it with his topspin. Now we're going to switch around and Simon's going to slice while I'm trying to be aggressive with my topspin. I'm trying to get onto my forehand, my forehand is my weapon. I'm trying to run around my backhand as much as I can. So if I can do that and hit my forehand, yes. And it's Simon's job to try and keep the ball low and tough for me to attack, just like he did on that last ball. Now we're gonna start getting some movement into it. So now we're gonna go two cross court, two down the line. Simon's always gonna return into my forehand side. You can also do this on the backhand side. great way to start changing direction so it's a controlled way of changing direction and the other player, the other player knows where you're going the other player has time to get there and the other player gets a chance to stay there it's not so much fitness but more for racket control ball control and actually a little bit of movement control because you know where it's going you should be able to control your movement and really think about your recovery your positioning and getting ready set up for the next shot to make things more intense, we're now going to go two cross, one down the line. Simon's going to ch uh, chase that down the line shot and recover for the cross court again. This is uh, very similar to what happens in a rally situation when you're playing your matches. When you do go down the line, you leave your uh, cross court exposed, so you leave that angle exposed. So a good player on the other side will expose and go into that angle, so it will go into the cross court and then you have to try and hit that shot and remain there and usually that's when the cross court rally will happen again until someone goes down the line and the whole process can be repeated.
Now we're gonna repeat it and go one cross court, one down the line, and this is the most intense part of this drill. It's a great way for me to practice my change of direction, for me to practice my control, for Simon to work on his movement, and if two players are working really hard and really focused, this is a great way to train before a match. players can take turns doing this drill and you should also do it on both the forehand and the backhand side. You want to practice both sides and your ability to change direction. So first going two cross two down the line, two cross one down the line and then one cross and one down the line. You can even time it so two minutes for two cross two down the line, two minutes for two cross one down the line and then two minutes one cross one down the line. If you can get through this six minutes in one go it becomes a really really intense session. We're now going to work on our volleys, so I'm going to hit to Simon. First he's going to hit a few balls down the middle, so we're going to groove that down the middle volley just to get things warmed up. Then he's going to go into my backhand side while remaining in the middle of the court, obviously slightly adjusted as if he's come forward and he's covering most of the court. And then we're going to go to the other side where he's going to hit it into my forehand. So all the time he's trying to hit quality balls, quality volleys, balls that are rising through the baseline, rising to me. Um, balls that I'm not able to just step in and attack. That's what he's looking for. Now Simon's gonna go into my backhand. into my forehand side. So now I'm going to warm up my smash and then I'm going to do one volley, one smash. This is again to recreate that scenario where in a match when you smash you have to try and close the net down after the smash hoping that the player doesn't give you a good ball into your feet, but you're trying to close that gap between yourself and the net to make the volley as easy as possible. After you complete that volley, obviously you're close to the net, therefore the opponent would see that you're close, would throw in another lob. So that lob, volley, lob, volley, it's a great way to train both your volleys and also your smash and the movement between the two shots.
really feel your quads working hard here because you're staying low for the volley and then you have to jump up, you have to get up off the ground for the smash. So you should really feel it becomes a little bit of a physical exercise as well as a technical one. So there you have it guys, we hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something new that you'll incorporate into your own training sessions. Do share it with your friends, press the like button um, and leave a comment underneath the video, let us know what you think. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel, we just passed 100,000 subscribers. If you're one of them, great. If you haven't subscribed already, what are you doing? Subscribe right now, turn on the notification bell so you get our latest videos as soon as we release them. Signing off, Simon and Alex from Top Tennis Training. All the best guys, see you soon.